Hey guys, it's Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norm, the new Nook is out and we have one right here. Ooh. Boom. The first one's here. You know, if you recall, it ha we haven't plugged it in for a while, yeah. so it's dead. Um, but it had a LCD touchscreen in the bottom. It ran used Android. The keyboard, stuff like that. It ran Android, I think, Eclair 2.1. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is running 2.1 as well. Okay. Uh, not that it really matters because you never ever see that unless you root it and get into all that stuff. Well, obviously, not only is there no LCD screen, no keyboard like the Kindle. No keyboard. So the big change is that it is a touch screen. Uh, and it doesn't use a normal capacitive touch screen. What it mm -hmm. uses is a series of IR lights and sensors around the edges, similar to like the HP Touch Smart and some other large screen installations we've yeah. seen. So actually, if you look at this, uh, if you look close to the bezel, the screen is actually uh, lower, a little, a little. It's recessed. Recessed into the bezel, just so you can see there's like some IR emitters around the side. So the nice thing about this is you don't actually have to press the e-ink screen very hard to get response. Yeah. I found the keyboard to be very usable. I still am not super fond of the Barnes & Noble store. I find it a little bit difficult to navigate. The whole interface is a little bit more confusing. The, you know, the Kindle's interface isn't perfect either, but I feel like that's a, a more easily understandable metaphor for book browsing, shelves, yeah. store, like it's all separated better. And this kind of gets integrated in weird ways. Um, the other thing that I found is that this device actually has a fair amount of trouble connecting to the Barnes & Noble store. It's a little bit picky about the Wi-Fi networks it connects to. Mm -hmm. And even when you get connected to a Wi-Fi network, sometimes it just inexplicably doesn't connect, which, you know, not acceptable really when you're talking about an e-connected bookstore. Yeah. We'll talk about that more in the full review after we've had a chance to use it more and find out exactly what the problems are. Well, we did like um, though, the response time seems to be greatly improved. It's, I think it's using the same e-ink technology, yeah, same e-ink generation. It's, they call it the Pearl screen. Yep, as what's on the Kindle 3. Yes. Um, in addition to the touch screen, there still are actually buttons on both the left and the right side. Two buttons on each side. And I actually don't know if I like the design of the buttons. The buttons are interesting. Instead of the more traditional, you know, buttons that have defined edges that are on the Kindle 3, this uses the same kind of recessed, built under the bezel buttons that were in the first generation e-ink nook. They're not as customizable as I'd like though. You can change yeah. which button moves forward and which button moves back, but you can't say all the buttons on the right side move forward, all the buttons on the left side move back, which is kind of what I would expect naturally. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can also use swipe gestures to navigate, which works surprisingly well. Although, I, I'm not going to want to touch the screen on this very much, because e-ink screens are a little bit hard to clean. If you get smudges on them, they, they last a little bit longer than they do on glass screens. Well, so. the thing everyone says when they first pick up the new Kindle, the last Kindle, was that they want a touch screen. Everyone's yeah. so used to touch screen. So it does feel very natural. Yeah. Whether, so it's personal preference whether you want to smudge up the screen. We didn't have too many smudges on it after one day of use. It's matte, so they don't show up too well. But if you have greasy fingers, you definitely are not going to want to touch this, because it is hard to get that clean. So the new Nook, obviously no physical keyboard. Um, the screen is actually the same size. It's about the same size. About the same size uh, as the Kindle. It's actually lighter too. So it weighs about seven and a half ounces. Okay. And the Kindle, we just weighed it eight and a quarter ounces. So less an ounce difference. It's kind of a negligible difference. Yeah, but still very easy to hold. It's a little thicker, but what we do like is that the back is recessed. So it's actually easy to grip with one hand. Yeah. Easy to grip. The, the other thing that I like is, you know, it feels like the paperback book size. I really like that a lot. I, I'm, I'm very excited about that. The screen seems a little bit faster than the Kindle, although we're getting to the place where that's negligible too and from a page turn perspective. Uh, they do more kind of animated stuff on the screen and there's always a little hint of shadow of what was there before. Um, but it's a, definitely a big improvement for the Nook. I'm excited to test it out and we'll have a full review coming up soon on Tested. See you guys next time, I'm Will. I'm Norm. Bye. Bye.